Welcome back to Tech Radar. I'm Mark Wilson, camera editor. And I am Matt Phillips, Tech Radar's video producer. And uh, firstly, again, starting all these videos like this lately, but thank you for the support on these videos. Um, if you are enjoying these videos and you're finding them useful, please do drop a like, follow us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, do all those fun things. Um, and let us know in the comments as well what sort of categories you want us to do these top five lists on. Uh, we're doing best vlogging cameras today because somebody, one of you, suggested it in the comments of a previous video, and we very much appreciate that. In the YouTube description, there will be a whole bunch of links. Let me explain briefly what they are. Firstly, uh, we're going through the top five vlogging cameras today, but the list on techradar.com is much, much longer. That'll be the first link you find in the description there. Uh, you will also find links to full reviews of all of these cameras we're going to talk about, as well as uh, links to buy these cameras. And those links update automatically to find you the best deal in your area. Uh, they are affiliate commission links, so we may earn affiliate commission if you buy through those links. Uh, but we at TechRadar are supported by you, our audience, and we very much appreciate you for that and with the rigmarole out of the way mark how you doing yeah good thanks yeah how are you thanks for coming on i appreciate it. i'm good um best <laughs> vlogging cameras now this is an interesting one right like i say people were commenting they wanted to see this list um but what constitutes a vlogging camera for those people out there who might not know what are we looking for in a camera to put it in our best vlogging cameras list well yeah there's about four or five things i think you need to be looking for um which cameras are increasingly including which is nice the last couple of years we've started to see camera manufacturers really wake up and take notice of how many people want a vlogging camera yeah. so um so yeah what, one of the main ones is uh, like a, a forward facing screen so you obviously if you're vlogging you're generally a one man or one woman band and <laughs> yep. uh, you need to be able to see yourself filming preferably so you can check the or in frame and uh, and everything looks good. So yeah, preferably that's a side flipping screen because that one then doesn't cover the ports on the top of the camera. Some cameras flip up, mm -hmm. um, which is slightly less desirable, but yeah. increasingly we're seeing side flipping ones. Yeah, another thing is good autofocus. Another thing which is very handy if you're the only person filming, mm -hmm. you want a nice sticky autofocus with face and eye detection on there. So if you move around the frame, which is quite likely, you'll stay nice and focus. Yeah. Um, and um, another thing is is good audio options. So it's quite easy to forget that um, if you're if you're focused on video to, to to think that the you need to think that the video the audio quality needs to match your video mm. quality. So yeah, so you want a microphone input preferably, so you can use an external microphone. That's that's ideal, and preferably um, a headphone input as well, so you can really check the. The quality afterwards but that's um that's more of a nice to have than a than must have yeah. yeah definitely and you know it's similar to what i do right for tech radar right i'm kind of the only video producer here and, and so i'm doing videos on my own so so these cameras are all very appealing yeah. to me obviously and one of the major <laughs> things one of the major things that i always think about with these cameras as well is portability right and that obviously comes massively into vlogging style and, and travel vlogging and that sort of stuff um so all of these cameras yeah. as well relatively portable right some better than others but but we'll talk about that as we go um yeah so i think it's worth then moving on then to our number five best vlogging camera you can buy right now in 2020 the dji osmo pocket now dji yeah. obviously a, a brand that people might be familiar with for drones but maybe didn't know were making vlogging cameras as well so tell us a little bit about this one yeah, I mean, this one's a bit of a it's a bit of a wild card mm. sort of option in this list because it's it came out uh, almost two years ago and it's still pretty much completely unique in, in vlogging cameras. It's um, it's a tiny pocket camera, but it's, the unique thing it's got is a, is a three axis uh, gimbal, so that holds the camera. And there's a couple of benefits to that. One is it keeps your video really stable if you're walking around. So if you do a lot of walking around videos then um, it's really useful for that. But also it's quite nice to uh, for getting some quite nice cinematic effects. Um, so like some nice smooth pans or or tilts, which you can't really get on other cameras without without a gimbal. So um, to have that in your pocket is still still a nice, a really nice bonus. Um, it, it's it's not it's not the best following camera for everyone because it's uh, it's got quite a small sensors. The sensor is about similar size to the one in your, in your smartphone. Yeah, and it's a little bit fragile. It's not waterproof. Um, so there's some practical limitations to it. Mm. But if you if you do a lot of um, videos walking around the city or or just walk walk and talk videos, then um, I think it's still a really nice option. Um, and it's come down a bit in price as well since you launched. So. Yeah, for sure. And, and you'll have to remind me and forgive me here for forgetting, but um, it, am I right in thinking the DJI Osmo Pocket doesn't have a screen and instead uses your smartphone screen to monitor the image that's coming through? Pretty much. Yeah. It's got the world's smallest screen ah. on the front, which is 
which isn't that useful. It's, it's real postage stamp size. Okay. Um, so yeah, mostly you want to use your plug your phone to the side. Um, that's a little bit cumbersome because the connector is quite small, but right. it, it works and it means you can change the settings a lot more. But it is possible to use it without having your phone attached to the side, as long as you you don't want to change the settings too much. Yeah. So yeah. So um, yeah, it's it's slightly cumbersome in some ways, but I think it's still it's still completely unique. So mm. uh, it's a good option. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, you know, something we touched on when talking about what we're looking for in a vlog camera, so something I think we should chat about here, is audio input-wise. Um, obviously, with most of these cameras, you're going to be wanting to look to add some sort of external microphone. Uh, but how does that work with the DJI? Um, you can get a microphone uh, input for it. So, but it's it's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit cumbersome. Mm -hmm. So that is probably one of its weaknesses. Um, it, it relies on a lot of external accessories to really create the full kind of vlogging package, which is a bit more expense. So, yeah, so I'd say audio is probably one of its weaknesses just because of the, yeah, the, the awkwardness of, of, of getting that on there. But um, but yeah, if, if you do a lot of voiceover afterwards in your videos, that's probably a better way to go and you can still get those nice um, cut scenes with, with nice smooth pans and things. So yeah. yeah. Interesting stuff. So then we'll move on to number four then and, and sort of back towards the more traditional cameras that we're used to, uh, the Fujifilm X-T4. So tell us a little bit about this one. Why it deserves to be at the number four slot? Yeah, it's um, it's one of the newer cameras on this list. So it's this this the XT4 is really more about pure video quality. So if you really prize video quality over most other things, but still want something that's relatively portable, mm -hmm. I think it really hits that sweet spot. Um, I mean, I, I I've owned the XT3, the predecessor, for quite a, quite a while, but the XT4 really adds everything that you want in in terms of video right. um, to that camera. So you get in body image stabilization, which is really big bonus obviously for, for vlogging. Um, you've got a microphone input and you've got really probably like best in class video quality for, for this size sensor. So um, it's a bit of a toss up between this and the Sony a6600, mm -hmm. uh, which is also a similar, similar camera with built-in stabilization. But I think the X-T4 nabs it for, for its image quality. And also if you like to shoot stills as well, then it's probably the best hybrid camera around. Uh, at that price. So. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, we're seeing more and more of these cameras become hybrids, right, between photography and video, and, and allowing you to achieve both. So that's really interesting. What are some yeah. of the What are some of the kind of stats for this camera? Are we able to shoot 4K, 60 frames per second, on all these kind of things? Like you say, it's one of the newer cameras. So that's something I'd be hoping for. Yeah. No. Yes, it shoots 4K at 60 frames per second mm -hmm. and up to a bit rate of 400 megabits per second. So. Um, yeah, it's very high quality and the it's also probably the best performing low light um, camera among APS-C cameras anyway. So um, so yeah, if you shoot a lot in, in kind of mixed lighting, then you'll get really nice dynamic range. Um, and you also get, if you really, really, really want to get into your sort of color grading and editing, you get uh, profiles like F-Log. Um, so you can shoot a more flat uh, video and then grade it afterwards. So. Yeah, so in terms of the the final final vlogging products, then uh, yeah, you're 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 going to get a great quality from this. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So then that brings us on to number three, and and the Canon EOS M50. Um, you know, it's interesting. I think when sort of vlogging first started, you know, you could argue 2006 almost when YouTube side. Um, Canon was kind of the king, right? Everybody was after the Canon 5D Mark II, I think it was at the time, or even Mark One. Um, and so, but Canon have sort of slipped away, right? As far as kings of kind of the vlogging world have gone. So why yeah. why the M50 in at number three? Yeah, I mean, you were back, you were there back in 2006 vlogging, weren't you? I think. Uh, yeah, <laughs> how old would I have been? 10, yeah, yeah at 12, <laughs> 12 I would have been in 2006. So yeah. You started earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, this, this is the oldest camera in this list, um, but it's still a great option. Um, it's probably the best value vlogging camera around at the moment I would say in terms of interchangeable lens ones anyway right um, the big caveat really is that um, you don't really want to shoot 4k with it it's really a, it's really a full HD camera only okay because this it came out a time when when Canon's processors really bottlenecked the the 4k performance mm -hmm. uh, um, so you can't get dual pixel CMOS autofocus in 4k um, right it comes with a massive crop as well so 1.6 times crop so as long as you only want to shoot full HD video, then it's it's a really good option. Um, it's 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 compact, it's light, um, it's quite stylish, um, 
and it's pretty affordable. So um, yeah, I think it's still it's old, but it's it's still it's still one of the best vlogging cameras you can you can buy at the moment. Mainly the main benefit really is that autofocus. Mm. So dual pixel seamless autofocus is just so consistent, reliable that that's that's just such a bonus for vlogging. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if, if you've got other cameras and, you, you know, you might be a Canon fan already, right, and you have some lenses and, and th that comes into a lot of people's decision making yeah. here, like Canon versus Sony or Fujifilm. I already have the lenses so I can sort of upgrade the body and, and keep my lens system. So that brings us quite nicely then onto our number two pick, the Sony ZV-1. So, Mark, tell us a little bit about this one. Um, Sony basically reconfigured their RX100 series of compact cameras and it into a, a really video focused uh, camera so um, probably the best thing about it is on the f1.8 uh, 2470 lens and then combined with its really fantastic autofocus means it's a really um, really excellent uh, vlogging camera yeah it's particularly good if you do a lot of product shots so um, mm -hmm. it's got a product showcase mode which um, effectively means you can hold something up to the camera and it will focus on that and not prioritize your face and then it will go back to, back to your face when you pull that away so so yeah that's quite a nice feature yeah, you know, and, and yeah, I've used a fair few cameras in my time and Sony's autofocus system has kind of always come out on top for me, you know, regardless of other features that are going on. I think Sony kind of nails it when it comes to autofocus and that's obviously really important for a lot of vloggers out there, like you say, showing off products, doing unboxings, these kind of things. A camera that's designed to kind of make that as easy, as simple as possible is going to be appealing to a lot of people. Yeah, it's, it's super sticky, so you can move around the frame a lot, and uh, yeah, and it will stay stay locked onto you. So, yeah, if, if you want a really reliable, pocketable uh, vlogging camera, then um, yeah, I think it's the best best one we've tested. Um, absolutely, absolutely, and you know, a lot of people sort of. It's almost like the console war, right? In video games, Xbox versus PS4, Canon versus Sony. These are the two <laughs> big ones that everybody talks about. But leading on to our number one pick, it's neither yeah. Canon or Sony. It's the Olympus O M D E. M5 Mark III, worst name on the list, <laughs> but the best camera apparently according to Tech Radar. So tell us a little bit about this one, why it deserves to be in at the number one spot, Mark. Yeah, zero stars for the name, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it's perhaps a slightly surprising choice, but when you look at all of those things that we asked for in a vlogging camera, it ticks pretty much all of the boxes. So it's it, it's nice looking camera for, for starters, it's compact, um, but you get the best image stabilization around the best best we've really seen you get phase detect autofocus as well which um, means it differs slightly from the the panasonic uh, equivalents of micro four thirds um, you get a side inch screen you get uncropped 4k video sheeting um, and you get microphone input as well so yeah, Olympus is one of those brands I think that maybe a lot of people don't know a massive amount about, right? We've heard of Canon, we've heard of Sony, um, but what's going on with Olympus at the moment? And I know they've been in the news a little bit, so maybe you can iterate on that. Yeah, I mean, the slight asterisk with this with this camera is that Olympus has announced that it's leaving the camera camera business at the end of this year, which, um, you know, it's, quite, it's a big deal. Um, yeah. But I don't think it should necessarily put you off buying this camera because... Um, there's already a really established range of micro four thirds lenses out there, so um, so you don't really have to worry about choice on that front. Panasonic will be continuing to support those lenses as well. And this camera's already had a couple of firmware updates to iron out any kind of launch issues, so it's, it's also quite established and you won't be missing out on too many features in the future. So um, it is a slight concern, but I, I still think, um, yeah, you, you'll be fine with this camera for the next. Um, it'd still be a great vlogging camera. So, um, yeah, I think it still deserves to be top of the list. Fantastic stuff, fantastic stuff. Um, and then I guess there's all this left to touch on then before we close out here, Mark, is, you know, Prime Day, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, they're all just around the corner. Everybody's looking out there to get a bargain. Maybe you're just looking at starting up vlogging and you're thinking, which camera should I get? Should I wait for Black Friday? Should I pick myself up a deal? Which brands do you think that people should be looking out for on these sale days? I think um, you generally want to be looking at cameras that are end of life um, and perhaps um, stores are clearing out the sort of final stock for. So, um, yep. I mean, we mentioned the, the Canon EOS M50 um, has, has been around a while. That could still have some slight reductions. Um, mm -hmm. Panasonic, um, I mean, they do some slightly overlooked cameras. So I think like the Panasonic G9 or even the G7, they both have um, image stabilization. Um, they they were worth looking out for in terms of price drops 
um, and even maybe the Olympus as well, given given the news that we talked about. So um, the I think the EM1 Mark II is quite similar to the EM5 Mark III, a bit older. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so um, yeah, there could be there could be some uh, bargains there as well. Fantastic stuff. And, you know, it's well worth, guys, uh, keeping an eye on techradar.com. Mark and the rest of the team, they're going to be updating those deals as they go live on the days. They work very hard to do all that. Um, so if you're looking for the most up-to-date information, that is the place to go for sure. Thanks for joining me today, Mark. I really appreciate it. No worries. Cheers. And all that's left to tell you is to head to techradar.com for all the latest tech news and reviews. See you next time.